from Nikolov, from uh, Slovatska, around Hodonin, and uh, the fifth one is Brno. Not so much so really. So that is the, is the situation plan. And we are here. And this are uh, landscapes from the wine regions in South Moravia. They are all very, very uh, nice around Stoimo, all the crater vineyards, around the Palava. We have uh, very old wine cellars in different uh, phases, older one, more older one, and more and more older one. And we have cradle wine cellars in different places from Marera with with great barriers and so And we have modern wine production. You see it in this one, in the left side it is a very modern and on the right side it is another one. And we have millions and millions liters of wine. <laughs> so we cannot drink all today. Oh. that uh, in, in, in the wine area is uh, a lot of famous towns and places. You see Valkice, you see Snoimo and Mikolov. Probably something of that you saw in, in your turn to in your journey to Bruno. In the other right, it is the reason to return again and to visit our region again. And then it is Jekovice. And this is a little town in the border between Veko Pavlovitska and Slovatska. And this guy is engineer by Novotny. He has a wine factory and he's a major of this little town. That is Pavel. So, and <laughs> I have a, a thank you from Eskif once again to our hosts. I think that it's been a really fantastic day today, a very good program. So thank you very much for all of the arrangements and all the work that you put into it. And of course, a special thanks to our speakers, uh, both our professionals and speakers from our own ranks who have come and told us about the situation in their country. So thank you to you all for making it such a good and rewarding day. But now I would also like my uh, the members of the executive to move a little closer.
because the sun, I don't feel completely on my own here. Stay here. Come along, you two. <laughs> You're the boss. I'm the five brain. So far, so far. As you probably read, if you read all the material, then unfortunately, tomorrow at the General Assembly, we have an election. We have an election to a member of the board because one of the members of the board is not standing for re election. Now, she is a woman that you all know. She's so, oh, you, you may have missed her. She's so quiet. She's not very social. She's very shy. So perhaps you hadn't noticed her. But I have. Winifred has been working with Eskiv ever since the very first meeting, just as I have. And we were so happy that in eight years ago, Winifred joined the executive, and then in 2010, she became my vice president. And she has been great. She's really, really good. She has been a fantastic support. She's been lots of fun to work with. We sent her off on Missions Impossible, and she's always <laughs> done it. She likes Missions Impossible. And as you all know, she's also been really very, very important in the two congresses that she arranged in the Netherlands, and has been a huge help to others who have arranged congresses, including this one. Now, we have a little present. Winifred, I'm afraid that one of the presents... The Maserati? <laughs> I'm sorry, the Maserati got sent back. Um, we've misread it and we couldn't afford the installments. But one of the presents that we had prepared for you, which Gunilla has spent a lot of time working on, didn't arrive in time. So we're going to have to give that to you afterwards, and we hope you enjoy it, because it is actually, it is a photo album of all sorts of things that Winifred has been involved in ever since she started in Essie. Most of these involve glasses of wine, quite a few of them anyway. A couple of them she looks serious and interested. But as I say, but unfortunately, there was a bit of a hiccup in that one. But we do have another little present. And this is from the board and from all of Eskiv. I'm sure it's something that you will appreciate because I think I can guess your taste. <laughs> we have all talked about it. So, Okay, a little bit of Danish design. So, I hope you like it. Okay, but now I'm not prepared for my speech because I think that will be yet tomorrow. And I think I'm all the time I've been working at SK. I did a bit lot of pressure and it was always nice to work with you and in the beginning with Daniel as our leader, our, our president and later with Jane and I was in the possibility to see Eskif grown from a group of people sitting together okay we have spine with injury we are associations but what can we do together and in the past Eight years, nine years, ten years, nine years. Tomorrow, next year it will be the anniversary of Eskim. Then we started, what can we do to improve the life of people with spinal cord injury? Because the first time we went together, we said, oh, we have all the same problems. We have problems with bowels, we have problems with rehabilitation, we have problems all the same. And it was so nice to come home. It was an homecoming. 
because everybody said, oh, we have the same problems. And it was so interesting. And in the last years, I've also visited a lot of your associations, and I've seen the way of you will be working, and some of your members, and all the association, and it makes me give a different view of people living with spinal cord injury. Because if you're going to the south, it's so different than I'm going to the north of Europe. And then I think, okay, I'm living in the Netherlands. And sometimes we are complaining, but in the Netherlands, it's not so bad today. No, but it's going being worse, and we are complaining a lot. But if I'm going to see situation in the eastern part of Europe, and I don't go to mention countries, but it, it could be worse. So, it, op it was an eye-opener for me, and I've learned so much about you. And I'm so thank you for you for all the times we have met together. And a lot of you are become friends, my ESCI friends. And I hope you will be my ESCI friends in the future, because I will think about you in the future. And I hope to see you next year or in the following time. Thank you for all, and thank you, Jane, for all the work we have done together and all the. Smoking time. <laughs> <laughs> because we always have a face to face and we have our moments of smoke to smoke. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I will thank you for this presentation and a lot of success. Okay, now we go to 
Jane Morswell. Yes. And she will present the ISCOS textbook. to the ESCIF Congress in Nordville two years ago, those of you who were present at the Congress, uh, I presented there the ISCOS e-learning platform together with Professor Finbjörn Sørensen from Denmark. Uh, the e-learn platform was launched at the ISCOS meeting in London in 2012. And if you remember back to the video, the chief of the editorial board of, uh, of the eLearn project was uh, a doctor from the Indian Spinal Injuries Center in New Delhi, uh, Dr. Shabra. And he, as Finn and I told you at the time, is a powerhouse of ideas and energy. So no sooner had the eLearn project been completed, when Shabra suddenly had this idea that what we need, really needed was a textbook. Now, some of us reacted like, oh no, we just spent two, three years working on an e-learn platform. Why on earth do we need a textbook? But then, of course, Shabra had lots of good ideas, lots of good arguments that many parts of the world are still not in reliable contact with the internet. There are still, in some teaching institutions, those who are teaching and training medical doctors and nurses, the idea of having a, a book is still important. So, Shabra got some of the members who were involved, of the editorial committee who were involved in working on the eLearn project, to then form an editorial committee to plan the textbook. The textbook was finished and was launched at the meeting in Montreal last week. Last week there was an ISCOS meeting together with the American Spinal Injuries Association, which is the American Professionals Organization. So it was launched about a week ago in Montreal and the second phase of the launch is here at the ESCIF Congress. Now, I'm not gonna talk anymore. I'll show you the promotion video that was shown in Montreal last week. to the remotest corner of the world 
as it unveiled eLearnSCI.org, a web-based resource on comprehensive management of SCI. To ensure a global perspective, it had representatives from 36 countries. For the first time, accurate, up-to-date, practical, easy to understand, and comprehensive information was available at the fingertips of everyone across the globe. Mission, to empower people with the right knowledge and show them how to enhance the quality of their lives and the lives of those in their care.
Vogue at Istanbul and Maastricht. We, at Iskos, are determined to work towards building an inclusive society. Today, we rededicate ourselves to our vision, to work together with our global medical fraternity, towards building a happier, more fulfilled life for all, and achieving our ultimate mission. So that's what I've been doing in my spare time. <laughs> no, in fact, uh, such patients uh, believe that uh, this four it's uh, sufficient for now. You know? Okay, thank you. Um, Leah. Thank you for a very nice presentation. And uh, I wish you that you are successful because it is a very, very nice idea to have a center like this. Uh, my question is, uh, as I understood well, uh, the primary care after accident, uh, badly said from road, from, from lake, from river, is in acute hospital, where is salt, surgery, respiration and other. First, thank you, the organizing committee, for giving me the opportunity to present the work of my colleagues from University Rehabilitation Center in Ljubljana, Socha, from Vocational Rehab Center concerning returning to work and uh, showing uh, one interesting case that we may say. May so I withdrew from that. I gave the notes and outlines that I had already prepared to some colleagues in uh, India and then we worked on it together where they did most of the typing and I was just a sort of a consultant. But the editorial board work was also quite time consuming because it seemed as though we were receiving about four emails a day with attachments of please look at version three of this and that. It just went on and on and on. But, again, under Dr. Chabra's guidance, it was all finished on time, which is quite amazing. And I think that if you go onto the ISCOS uh, website, then you'll find more details about how to get hold of the textbook if you're interested in it. But, as I say, there is also, as I understand, a downloadable PDF file with at least some of the material. I'm not sure it's the whole textbook. But it's safe. So take a look at the ISCOS textbook, the, the ISCOS website. Sorry. Okay, thanks. Okay, Jane, thanks for this presentation, or this move to show us. <laughs> it was a lot of presentation. Work, what you have done. Um, one question. Does somebody has a question? Otherwise, we'll go on because we are going out of time. No? Okay. So, then, thanks. Um, then we are going to Slovenia. Daniel Global Globalcar. Did I pronounce it well? Okay, thank you. And you will give us a presentation. Uh, return to work after spinal cord injury and it's a best practice. Vocational Rehab Center, and in a few weeks they established that he's still not able to re return to work, to, to work with the computer and to, to handle the, the photograph. So he proceeded with intensive medical rehabilitation. He was quite uh, 
active and motivated, he, he went also to the United States and, and find the second opinion about uh, additional operation and restorative neuro neurological procedures with uh, stem cells and like that, but I don't want to go in details. So in the next year, in April, we found that he's walking without a system further improved, so he managed almost half of kilometer and six minutes walking test. Also, his dynamic equilibrium was quite improved, but still some spasms and weakness in the upper limbs. But the in Invalidity in Pension Institute pushed us to, to assess him, so he was assessed in summer of 2013, and it was stated that he's able to work in short and four hours working time. Uh, the reason for permanent disability was injury at work, and he has got the right to get partial disability benefit. So he started to work 20 working hours per week from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., mainly sedentary work, sometimes even at home. He can do his work with, by the computer. Yeah. 2 to 55 and educational level was mainly secondary school level. Employment status, 14 of them were employed before SEI, 8 of them never employed before. And the level of injury was equally uh, of cervical, thoracic and lumbar part. So the majority of them had different health compl complications, mainly complex pain syndromes. The outputs of this small survey is present. We were more than all we here. We were more than 300 participants because 250 English-speaking participants were online and 50 Czech-speaking participants were online. And the transmission will be on website. We, to, to who is going home, we wish you safe journey. And to all others who remain, we wish you a nice stay. We are at your dispos disposition with all questioners and all work. Good luck to everybody. Nej, det var det. Nej, det var allt. 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 N